So you're not going to make me cry. No, we're going to make you cry. <laughs> <laughs> big network shows mean big network stars. 20 single and rolling. Yeah. Ratings bring fame, and fame makes everything sweet. I got a really nice leather-bound um, satchel with my name on it. Uh, did y'all not get this? No, 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 no. We know them best as the characters they played on television. Big T mama's grabbing me and going, Girl, you did good last night. Come on. Oh, is, is, ain't you from that uh, different strokes? They were in our living rooms week after week, year after year. They became part of our family. They're network TV stars, and on this episode, we'll go back in time with a cast from the mega hit show, A Different World. We'll relive some of their favorite moments. Okay, now he might have that part right. <laughs> As they dish a little dirt. I was three days away from my last unemployment check. Spill some little known secrets. I went in with this um, accent from my third grade teacher, Miss Pankard. And talk about the show that forever made them household names. You remember me. A Different World premiered in 1987 as a spin-off from the hugely successful series, The Cosby Show. Bill Cosby's Dr. Huxtable sent his TV daughter, Denise, off to college. The show was securely positioned between Cosby and Cheers in NBC's prize Thursday night 8.30 time slot. What do you think? I can work with this, can't I? A Different World was the first situation comedy to show life at a historically black college, focusing on the lives of the student body. The first season of A Different World starred Lisa Bonet, Dawn Lewis, Marissa Tomei, Kadeem Hardison, and Jasmine Guy. The show tackled social and political issues rarely dealt with in television at the time. The audience was tuning in in droves. Twelve years after the final episode, the original cast got together to relive and rejoice in the series' success. We did this show for six seasons. And we got very close. And I still feel very close to them all because we were transports into L.A. I don't get a chance to see them very, much, very often because everybody's life has changed. It's you. How are you? I'm wonderful. Hi. How are you? Look how beautiful you are. And when we get together, it's like family. <laughs> We've not been in the same room together like today in a while. I loved that A Different World had a diverse cast. We were all black, but we were so different. A Different World was a hit right out of the gate. Almost always in the top five throughout its six-year run. Must see Thursday was Cosby, A Different World, Cheers, Something Funny at 9.30, Wings Sometime, and then L.A. Law. Oh, L.A. Law. That was right. must see right. Thursday night. That's what set it off. The first season of a hit TV spinoff is not unlike the first semester of college. Not as easy as you think. I think the level of expectation for us was really, really high because the level of excellence on the Cosby show was really, really high. There was production on the West Coast for A Different World, production on the East Coast for The Cosby Show, and I was asked to go and do an episode of Different World. I couldn't tell if the show was funny. The scripts were bouncing all over the place to me. We hadn't aired yet, and I was getting absolutely no feedback. Well, I was getting feedback, but I was getting really negative feedback from the producer of the show, Ann Beats. Ann had just left uh, square pegs and Saturday Night Live, mm -hmm. and then she brought you guys in as Square Pegs Jr. Square Pegs Jr. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every script we had was like a revamped Square Peg yeah. script. We, we could have been, like I said, four white kids from campus. There was no ethnicity to it at all. Some of the stories we were asked to do were uh, to be kind, light. Now Denise is a woman who goes for natural fibers. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you bought at the store. Yeah, um, I spent a little more than I planned, so I'm going to need to borrow some of our money. 
I spent my share on Buttercup's present. Y'all were doing episodes about keeping an egg. egg. Come oh, back, ooh. little egg, bitch, y'all. Huh? Eggs, about pig noses, about stuff that had no connection, really, to, to college. He needed some help. I thought the I first season happened. we were lost. The star of our show was Lisa Bonet. She protected us from a lot. Lisa took a lot of unnecessary heat that was not hers. I mean, all we could do was what was given to us. I just felt like they didn't know what to do with Marissa Tomei's character. One week she was brilliant, the next week she was a ditz. So I taped the episode and I went back to our studios in New York and knocked on Mr. Cosby's door. He had invited me in and he smiled and said, so how was it? And I looked at him and I said, well, Bill, your name is on this and it's not right. I honestly felt after that first season that that was it. It's kind of like, yeah, I don't even want to do this. I don't, I don't understand what it is we're trying to do here. Maybe a couple of days, maybe a week later, he came and he said, I want you to go out there and, and, and take a broom. <laughs> Over the summer, a lot happened. He got the master sweeper. He called Debbie. So we come back to the show. We have a new producer. And Beats is gone. Debbie Allen comes in. Oh, Wonder Woman, whatever you want to call her. Debbie Allen. Debbie came Allen came to the door. Then you see Dwayne. Ah, oh, Cherie, my Cherie. You give him a two kiss. I remember the breakfast that I had with Carsey Werner and all of them. And Bill had said, uh, Miss Thing, uh, Miss <laughs> Trash, that's what he called me. Miss Trash, I want you to get your broom out and clean house. <laughs> I mean, he was giving me authority to let anybody go, do whatever. I didn't let anybody go. I didn't fire anybody. I just wanted to go in. And having gone to Howard University, I mean, you've got to put some hot sauce on the table. Yeah. Right? You know, that was just as simple as that. But while you're at the post office, see if they got any job open. I've got a job. I'm a musician. Hey, man, I mean a job that pays. Wake up and smell your empty bank account. Well, if you were any real kind of friend, you'd carry me a little longer. Oh, hey, I am your friend. I'm going to carry your bags to the curb. That's it. <laughs> when Debbie came, it all Everything changed. Everything changed, yeah. And you get excited, start unpacking oh, it. Oh, my mama, food, come on. The biggest change was we had to exercise every morning. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't really keen on it. Debbie had the entire cast doing dance warm-ups before we even began rehearsal. She came in and she flipped it all around, and she was like. We're going to lose the, the girls. We're going to lose them weaves. She snatched the weaves out of everybody's uh -huh. hair. All the girls with their long hair in that first season, they was just feeling themselves. She was like, uh-uh. And that show did a 180. All of a sudden, it was alive with spirit. Keep playing, keep playing. <laughs> we had a new leader, and... It really became fun to go to work. So nothing. Oh, I'm with you right now. And I tell you what, I bet the entire cast and crew a week's pay. I don't blow nothing. You yeah. neutralized it. You opened the door for us to talk to the writers. Yeah. Exactly. And it's never you been that way. You respected us. Yes. Exactly. Well, yeah. I mean, you, know, you gave us one of you that helped too. Taught me how to act. Yes. Taught me how to <laughs> Between this one and that one, I learned how to act. Gave you sexual I remember, tension. Well, I didn't know what I didn't know what sexual tension was. Over time, she made us one, all on the same show, all looking for the same things. I asked questions that I thought were relevant. In planning this po protest, if you would have outlined certain things and you know made some kind of a plan, I didn't want to see young black students portrayed as people that are just drinking and partying and babysitting eggs. We had to be about something. Coming up, a different world. It was social and political. Battery is the leading cause of injury for women. But sometimes it got personal. Man, you can't hit on me. You're playing my daddy. When I was a network TV star returns. The second season of A Different World began without original cast members Lisa Bonet and Marissa Tomei. It was decided by the powers that be that she goes back to um, the Cosby show. But there was a rumor 
and I have to preface this with it was a rumor because I haven't talked to um, Dr. Cosby that he wanted to incorporate her pregnancy on the show and actually show the struggle of a young mother trying to get her degree, which I thought was brilliant. But of course, they didn't go that way. Jasmine Guy now led the ensemble under the creative direction of producer-director Debbie Allen. I knew that the show had the potential to really do something really great. Battery is the leading cause of injury for women. It is time we call this what this is. My favorite work that was done on the show were shows like the apartheid show or the date rape show or the AIDS show that had heavy issues but were still funny and still entertaining because that's how life is. There's something I want you to have. It's a very important accessory necessary for the evening. A condom. <laughs> All the shows before, it had been comic, it had been, you know, sitcom. -y. The stories started to have real meaning. That was the spring of 1992. By the following spring, Josie Webb had died of acquired immune deficiency syndrome. Disease we all know is AIDS. We were the first uh, television show to address AIDS. Mm. I remember we were having a, a cast read through here in my house. We were all in the dance studio when Magic Johnson made the statement mm. that he had HIV. He was mm. HIV positive. I remember you were crying. Everybody, everybody was crying. Everyone was devastated. But the next germ of a thought was that we had to do something about it. When we did this episode, and, and Tisha was amazing mm -hmm. in this role, and this was actually the episode where where I found Jada, because Jada auditioned for that role. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yep, that's when I saw Jada. I said, no, we can't lose her to AIDS. We oh, gotta cool. give her, uh, Come back. put her on the show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time Bill ever came to the set. That was the first time. The that's first and right. only time. Well, <laughs> <laughs> My favorite episode of all time was, what was it called? It's the one with Dean Cain. Yeah. We were going to a football game, Hellman versus the rival school. School. Yeah. And uh, he was playing bookie. That, that was the thing that, that uh, once I was, uh, the, the character was laughing and counting his money, they asked for a spray can. They're like, what for? I said, well, we're going to put his name on his car. And they went to the car and started spraying the end. They only got the end out before... A fight started, and as the fight starts, he comes around and all bedlam breaks loose. And I, and I got to find out that, that Dean Cain is a pretty strong cat. And then we all end up in jail telling both sides of telling what, what happened. You can either tell me, or I'll go with their version. I was in the stadium parking lot, mm -hmm. sitting in my car. Hey, man, stop. Uh, Come on. Uh, <laughs> And then when they told their side, we were like, yeah, what's up, dog? Yeah, coming where you like, coming rah, from? Rah, rah. Yeah. <laughs> That was that was easily. If I had to pick one episode that that stands out for me, that was one. I got you know, you you go down from there, and there's like another five that are in a group. But we changed the way people thought of young people on television. Collectively, they would listen to us talk, and we would tell of different things in our lives, events in our lives, people in our lives that mattered and how they affected us. And it was honest. I love that about the show. We trusted them to hear our voices and incorporate it in the scripts that they did. And I've also heard feedback from people that it gave them a platform from which to talk to their child about something that was very uncomfortable. A Different World was not only a platform for relevant issues of the day, it was also a long-running vehicle for emerging and established talent. Superman, that was oh. Dean Kane. Dean, Dean Kane. Kane. That was his first gig. First gig. Because yeah. when I did Superman, he was like, I have something to tell you. That was my first time ever working. Oh, I mean, so much Superman. Yeah. Debbie, you got good taste. Yes, well, no, indeed. you know, we have such a wealth of talent that either premiered or got a really good job. We had... We discovered Gary Dornan. Gary Dornan was on CSI. I okay. discovered him on the street of Paris. I said, oh, honey, can you walk and talk to me? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Halle Berry Halle was Berry. on our show, and I remember I was so Gary beautiful. Just sweating, that girl. Yeah, he was. <laughs> he was. I was like, leave her alone. <laughs>
Oh, when Mike Tyson showed up with his two hundred two hundred thousand dollar Lamborghini and, 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 and let and, and let Kareem drive it, who didn't have a driver's license. I said, I said, Mike, he doesn't have a license. Oh, it don't matter if he crashes it. I just get another one. <laughs> when the mamas were on the show, it was great. Diane Carroll was my mother, and Patti LaBelle was Dwayne Wayne's. We just had a ball. How's my baby? <laughs> Bye, mama. <laughs> <laughs> We had Shaft and Superfly on the show at the same time. Richard Roundtree played um, Kim Reese's father, and my dad was Ron O'Neill. Superfly. Mm -hmm. And I said to Ron, you know, if you ever want to go over lines or I don't mind, you know, working on stuff, he was like, how about tonight? I was like, man, you can't hit on me. you playing my daddy. Being a network TV star is a great gig. So how did the cast of A Different World get the job of a lifetime? I auditioned for A Different World several times and um, was rejected. I was three days away from my last unemployment check. This role came up of Gina for A Different World and um, as soon as I read the part, I knew it was me. When this role came up for Whitley Gilbert, I decided to go in as unlike me as possible. Because I figured, you know, how many times can you reject me? When I had to audition for Dwayne Wayne, the character, it was just with Eileen Knight, the casting director, and maybe a couple of producers. When we got to Network, it was you and I, maybe one. No, 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 I was the only one who went to Network. We went and had a no. call back in LA. Hey, easy. So now what really happened <laughs> was they flew me out. I stayed in the hotel at the, U, uh, at the Universal Sheridan. No, oh, he was at the Mondrian on Sunset. Okay, now he might have that part right. <laughs> oh, see what I'm saying? I went in with this um, accent from my third grade teacher, Miss Pankert. I walked in the door and there were 30 people in the room. It was packed. And I was like, <gasps> and that was it. That was my audition. It tanked. I went in and I auditioned. They flew me to LA. I never thought, I walked into the room and I was my last choice. It felt like a million people, a sea of people in the room. I just took a deep breath and I just went for it. I was flown back to LA, met with Mr. Cosby and was sitting there in the room, in his dressing room in Brooklyn where he was doing the Cosby show at the time with him and the producers. And the first thing they go, they go, well, just hold on, just one second, okay? We gotta speak to Mr. Cosby about something. I went in the network and I looked around at the room like, where's everybody else? And they said, you're it. Um, the casting directly taps me on the shoulder. She goes, you got it. You're welcome to go downstairs to the table reading if you want. A what? So then they just started talking about what they were gonna do with my hair and the clothes I was gonna wear. And up until this point, no one has ever addressed me. So I, excuse me, I have a question. They said, what, does this mean I have a job? They said, what do you think we've been talking about for the last 15 minutes? And that was how I found out. And the next thing I knew, I was whisked off to California and Life has not been the same since. I go to the table, the entire cast of A Different World was there, writers, producers, and there was a chair there for Whitley Gilbert. And I walked in, and the only thing I can remember saying to myself is, oh God, they're gonna think I really talk like this. Because I had no intro, no hanging out at the snack area, nothing. It was like, guys, this is Whitley Gilbert, actress Jasmine Guy, welcome her to the show. And the first thing out of my mouth was, hi Denise, how's your summer? And I remember a couple of them looking at me like, is that how you gonna do it? And I was like, that's what they liked. The big celebration is tomorrow night. Coming up, the cast looks back. This is more than a show to me, it was an era. A character can be a blessing. It can make you a household name, and it could be the last name people ever call you by. And towards the future, when we return. Six seasons, 144 episodes, and in the top five nearly every year it was on the air. A Different World ended its successful run in 1993. A Different World made it possible for for me to explore avenues that I had only dreamed about. Being a network star can be tough. I felt the weight and pressure 
of, of having to, to kiss, you know, Halle Berry and, gosh, who else did I have to kiss? I mean, just so many women. There were so many. Have money in your pocket. Yeah. A little love coming at you from everywhere. Yeah. Boy, I was just having a ball. My first big expenditure of money was to pay off my student loans from college. I think the first place I went to was Fred Siegel. The fact that we were young and we were black and we, a lot of us were from, you know, not the Hollywood sector. But just for anybody, period, to have a hit show is a rare thing. A character can be a blessing. It can make you a household name and it could be the last name people ever call you by. Yeah, I'm still Wayne Wayne. Oh, they, they didn't even get the name right. It's not Dwayne Wayne, it's right. Wayne Wayne or Dwayne Dwayne. Or Ron Ron. <laughs> Ron Ron, hey, it's Ron Ron. With the end of the series, the close-knit cast went their separate ways. After A Different World, I experienced unemployment for the first time. I experienced a lot of auditioning. I've been directing Raven, That's a Raven, which is so much fun to do. And all of us have gone on to do so many other things so since many then, things. whether it's producing, writing, developing. But at the end of the day, being a network star on a show like A Different World is an experience that will live in their hearts and ours forever. But it'll never quite be the same as the first time, you know. You get lucky sometimes, you catch lightning in the bottle and, mm -hmm. and, and then it's yours for that moment in time. This is more than a show to me, it was an era. A Different World, for me in my career today, is, was definitely the uh, turning point. Looking back, that was the best time of my life. You can never step in that same water twice. So right. you're always going to think about it. You're always yeah. going to uh, remember it. Nothing that will ever kind of compare to those six years. I would just like to be on that set with everybody. I mean, just laughing and laughing till I peed in my clothes. I miss that.